These are my most hated fighters of 2022. I'm going to use a tier list to break them down. There have been many fighters in the UFC this year that have really, really annoyed me. And they are hidden around the perimeter of the screen. I'll slowly reveal them one by one as the video goes on. And place them where they belong on the screen. The most hated fighter of the year 2022 is going to be an S tier. There's only room for one. A tier is the best. Or the, wor the worst, in this case, the most hated. And D tier is like people that I'm mildly annoyed by. We're going to go through them straight away. Let's start straight away with. And I'm going to get... I'm going to speed run some of these. Okay? Because the last video was 50 minutes long. And I'm not going to do that to you again. We start straight away with... Justin Gaethje. Fight Fiziev! Or don't... Fight! Okay? I'm sick of you calling out other names. I'm sick of you looking for money fights. Fight Fiziev. I'm sick of it. Get in the cage and fight someone you haven't fought since Oliveira. And by the way, you were chatting a whole bunch of nonsense before the Oliveira fight as well about calling him a quitter. Who was tapping him round one to a rear naked choke? You, Justin Gaethje. You. I love Justin Gaethje's fight style, but... This guy says he's looking for a fight, but Fiziev's right there calling for you. And I don't see you putting up your hands to volunteer, okay? Fight Rafael Fiziev in the main event of a fight night. Stop playing games with us. Justin Gaethje at B tier, though. There you go. We're setting it off with a pretty good tone straight away. We move on to someone else who is. Sean O'Malley. Okay, now I'm going to try and take personal bias out of this. Because he has annoyed me this year on a personal level. We had some beef. Okay, but in hindsight, I'm going to say this. The decision weren't that bad and that's not up to him. Okay, I'm putting Sean O'Malley at C tier. The cheating in his fight against PTN was very, very annoying. Okay, very annoying to see. But I'm still going to put Sean O'Malley at C tier. He's high up at C tier. But in hindsight... When you watch back the Yan fight and you compare it to some other decisions we've had this year. By the way, I'm probably going to do a worst robbery of the year tier list tomorrow. Um, Sean O'Malley's decision weren't all that bad. And he don't control it. You know what I mean? And it was a fun fight, a wicked fight as well. We move on to someone else on this list who is Colby Covington. I'm putting him at D tier. In all honesty, I really am putting him at D tier. He's annoying me. And he's annoying me by not fighting. I know he can't fight because his main claim to getting some money off of Jorge Masvidal is to like act like he's ruined his fighting career and he hasn't been able to fight in this long, so he needs compensation for it. So I know that there's a reason as to why he can't fight, but the dude's wasting his entire prime again. And it really annoys me when fighters do that. So I'm putting him at D tier. Not too annoying, no fault of his own, but kind of mildly annoying. We move on. To someone else who is Henry Cejudo. Dude was waffling for a year straight. I'm putting him at C tier. Waffling for a year straight about coming back and fighting. Weren't even in the USADA pool. I thought he was in the USADA pool. He's been waffling for about two years now about coming back and fighting all these top guys. Wasn't even in the USADA pool the entire time until recently. Really annoyed me when I found that out. But, good YouTube channel. And he's been having some good slapbacks against fighters. Um, including O'Malley. I think he said you should fight Pimlet. Then the, the judges wouldn't know who to rob and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to do there. Henry Sudo at C tier. Triple C. Making a home for himself at C tier in both of my tier lists so far. We move on to someone else who is. Daniel Rodriguez. I did nothing to do with him. But justice for Lee Jing Liang. He ruined it, okay? He didn't win that fight. Nothing to do with him, which is why he's only at D tier. Justice for Li Jing Liang is all I'm going to say about that positioning, okay? We move on to someone else who is TJ Dillashaw. I'm putting him at B tier, you know? I'm putting him at B tier, dude. Affecting legacy out here. Holding off, making a big like conundrum about getting his title shot and ruining other people's title shots in the division it could, we could have seen aldo fight for the belt against aljo and we would never have to seen him take on marab and his career wouldn't be over but no tj is like no i'm ready for it guys believe me you should have sat out and let aldo who was healthy get his chance at the title shot 
But now Aldo's career's ruined. He's done. And you fought with one arm. And you knew it was going to pop out. And you ruined Legacy. Again. Pathetic. TJ Dillashaw at beat it. We move on to someone else who is. Aljamain Sterling. Again, I'm putting him at C tier. He's just annoying. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Aljo, to be honest with you. It just annoys me that he fought Yan and Yan's corner team couldn't even show up on the fight. So he had no corner team for the fight whatsoever. His whole like training camp was messed up because he's a... Uh, his people couldn't get into the uh, US at the time and they all had to stay in Russia. So he didn't have his training camp go, go, go to plan. And still Aljo had to eke out a split decision. And then we got the Dillashaw fight, which again is no thought of his own. But it's still just fake legacy on top of fake legacy. And I'm still annoyed by last year of what he was doing last year. Okay? So, whatever. Aljamain Sterling at C tier. No fault of his own, but still mildly annoying. We move on. Mike Jackson is coming out. I actually forgot I put him in this. I'm putting Mike Jackson at A tier, you know. I'm going to save some spaces at A tier because there's worse people that I'm going to pull out in a second. But Mike Jackson, you're an MMA fighter, dude. You don't call someone out on Twitter and then when they show up in real life and and side control you to death like Jake uh what Jake Shields did um you don't start looking to sue them afterwards and take them to court okay that's just that's just not how it goes if if you're acting all tough on twitter either get in the cage with them but if they jump you and side control you dude i don't know dude it's just a bit it's silly to me. Like, they squared up with each other as well. It's not like he got attacked from behind after he lost a 25-minute fight with someone like Masvidal did to Covington. Because that's a whole different level of bitch assness. okay? But this is still annoying. And just the way he acts in general about things on Twitter, I think I've got to put him at A-tier, dude. I, I do want to see him get hit by a truck. I I'll be honest with you. It would be quite funny. But either way, Mike Jackson at A-tier. Dude's being a, a grade one bitch at the moment, okay? But there's worse at A tier. I might even put him at B tier by the end of this video. There's a couple worse at A tier, okay? It's not even particularly about the suing thing. It's just he acted like a whole bitch about the whole situation. It was very annoying. And he's a racist, so put him at A tier. We move on um, to something else, which is... Molly McCann. Well in, lad. I'm putting her at B tier. She's so annoying. And I'm glad that she lost to Erin Blanchfield. I thought she was going to lose to Erin Blanchfield. And to me, it's just like the wearing a tax the rich t-shirt whilst signing a fucking nearly million dollar deal with Barstool. It's just like, oh, you're going to oh, tax yourself then, Mrs. Richie Rich. Okay. Fucking annoying, dude. Like, just because you're les doesn't mean you have to be obnoxiously that way politically you know what i mean like it's it's just how it is though it's like a bundle package once they swing that way you know what i mean once they're pitching for the same side it's just a bundle package to be annoying politically like that but like she's all this tax the rich stuff oh really in your mansion okay cool with your with your <coughs> multiple hundred thousand dollar deal with barstool that you signed and all this hype behind you either way molly mccann um, got veneers, I actually just kind of don't like people that get veneers in general, and also, um, her carrying the belt around after beating, I want to say it was Hannah Goldie, or Luana Carolina, carrying the belt around after beating an unranked women's flyweight fighter, grabbing a replica belt from the crowd and running around with it, obnoxious, and let Pimlet be on camera on his own sometimes. I don't know. We move on. You know what? I'm putting Mike Jackson at B tier. Either way. We move on to something else, which is... Fucking Paddy the Buddy, lad. I'm putting him at A tier. He's not S tier. He's not the most hated fighter of the year. And I know people are going to think, oh, who is then? Who, who possibly could be more hated than Paddy Pimlet? And that's why Pimlet's at A tier. Because, my God, the way he handled that loss to Jared Gordon was just obnoxious. And then the whole Ariel Hawani thing and he was making stuff up and it just, it's not been a good year for Paddy Pimlet is all I'm going to say. It has not been a good year for Paddy Pimlet this year. He has made a right cunt of himself. Um, good performance earlier this year though at UFC London, but man, he has made an absolute mong of himself. 
um, towards the end of the year. And that's why I'm putting him at A tier. But again, the decision ain't his fault. You know what I mean? That's why I'm holding back from S tier. The guy at S tier, there's reasons. And it's all his fault. Okay? It's all his fault, the reasons. But A tier, Paddy Pimlet, we're putting him there. Top of A tier as well, I would say. Um, he has just been an absolute right annoying bastard towards the end of the year. And um, I think he deserves an A-tier position here and deserves some hatred. Especially for acting like the fight with Jared Gordon wasn't even close. And then even backstage saying, like, mate, you are tough as fuck. Like, saying someone's tough after they arguably should have beaten you. Saying that's the one thing you respect about an opponent is just degrading. And I hated it. So Paddy Pimlet at A-tier, what a muppet he has been towards the end of the year. We move on to another one, which is... Conor McGregor. I'm, he don't annoy me that much. I'm putting him at D tier. Listen, he's allowed to take the roids. It's just a USADA loophole. You know what I mean? He's allowed to, and he needs them to recover with his leg. That's just kind of how it is. You know what I mean? It's annoying that that's going on, but it's not like he's been busted by USADA cheating for a fight or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, he's just... It is annoying, so I have put him in this video, and it is annoying seeing him waffle on Twitter, but he's drunk. You know what I mean? Like, I just... I chuckle at him more often, and then he sort of redeemed himself with this whole Artem Lobov thing going on recently, so maybe C tier for McGregor, but I'm putting him at D tier. I think I think people have just sort of been amused by his drunken voice notes on Twitter over the past year, more than like other years that McGregor's had where he's had some stuff come up about this and some stuff come up about that. There's been some bad years, but this one's just sort of been like, uh, McGregor's on Twitter again. You know what I mean? There's not really been any big resounding hatred moment, as, at least as far as I can remember. Maybe I should put him at C tier, but he don't annoy me that much because he's not even in the game right now. You know what I mean? We move on to someone else who is. John Jones. Uh, just included. He hasn't really done nothing this year. That is an annoying part in itself. But just over from last year where he would have been at A or S tier because he is scum of the earth, piece of shit, filth. Um, but just put him at C tier anyway. You know what I mean? He's naturally should be hated a little bit, no matter what happens. I know he hasn't done anything this year. And he, I, I know he was kind of racist towards a cop. And that sort of came out in February of this year. But that was from his arrest in September. Personally, racism's kind of funny. Um, and I'm not really going to get too up in arms and annoyed about that. Uh, but yeah, John Jones should be at C tier. Uh, just, just for being a piece of shit that he is. For all the stuff that he's done behind the scenes. And the Royd stuff as well. So just overall. No matter what Jones must be hated. At least a bit per year. Even if he's done nothing bad that year. From residual hatred. You know what I mean? We move on to someone else who is. Brian Ortega. I'm putting him at D tier you know. I just. He ain't really done much. Okay. And hear me out. <laughs> hear me out here. He hasn't really done much. But the way he was acting after the Yair Rodriguez fight, where he was acting like he literally went backstage and was saying sorry to Yair Rodriguez's family that they couldn't even have a real fight. And he thought he was winning the fight before the injury happened and stuff like that. First of all, the injury happened because you were in an armbar position nearly, okay? And you were in a bad position that Yair locked you up into. So it wasn't like some fluke injury that happened out of nowhere. Yair did it to you, Okay. Don't be apologizing to Yair's parents backstage because you couldn't even have a real fight and it was just over due to some flukiness. You were getting your face smashed off before that happened as well and getting absolutely schooled in that fight on the feet by Yair Rodriguez. So, Ortega, just the way he acted afterwards. But I can't put him too high up because he is injured and it's kind of sad. You know what I mean? We move on to someone else who is. Josh Emmett. It's not his fault. <coughs> but my God, I hate this goblin. I do. This year, he's kind of annoyed me. And it's not his fault. It isn't his fault at all. He hasn't done any of it. But Dan Ige arguably should have beaten him. And Calvin Cater beat him. And now he's getting the big title uh, title elimination belt. Interim belt. Uh, interim title shot. In the featherweight division against Yaya Rodriguez. For two bad decisions back to back. And Kate is out for a year. And his career is probably over with a bad leg. 
So, like, it's just, like, he ruined someone's career through being the beneficiary of a bad decision, but not his fault. We'll put him at C tier. He just looks a bit goblinish anyway. We move on to something else, which is Israel Adesanya. Someone else. Jesus, don't want people getting on me about that. Uh, someone else. He's a human. Um, Israel Adesanya. I'm putting him at B tier. I just don't like him anyway. I just think he's a bit of a cunt anyway. In all honesty, I I, I just think he is. Um, didn't he fight Whitaker at the start of this year? And it was just, he robbed Whitaker. Whitaker should have won that fight at the start of the year. And then he had another fight with uh, Jared Cannonier and promised it to be fireworks and said he was going to hunt Cannonier down and finally have a really exciting fight. And it was just a dead fight and people were walking out and he blamed all of them as casual fans for not enjoying him leg kicking at range for 25 minutes, even though he promised us he was going to hunt down Cannonier and KO him and make it look easier. He's just been a bit annoying this year in general. And then on top of that, the way he reacted to the Alex Pereira loss, acting like he wasn't even rocked and it was all because of his leg. Like he just took the loss so badly. I know everyone in the media was saying how well he took the loss, but he took the loss so horrifically bad. And just spun up a fake reality to live under the existence of. And I'm putting him at B tier for that reason. He thoroughly annoyed me this year. We move on to someone else who is. What are we going to do? Valentina Shevchenko. Weird decision. I haven't seen her since. What's going on? Weird decision. Um, I think she should have won, but she did headbutt Santos. And cause all that damage to her eye in that fight. Which is the main reason why the fight started looking a different way in rounds 4 and 5. Um, but we just haven't seen her in the octagon since. And haven't heard anything about a comeback. So, <laughs> fuck you. We move on. Masvidal. I'm saying it. I, I'm putting him in there with Pimlet, you know. He's really annoyed me this year. And I'm, he really has annoyed me this year. I listen, Jake Shields didn't sucker punch Mike Jackson from behind after they were talking trash back and forth. And uh, Mike Jackson had a fight with him and beat him in an actual, actual octagon for 25 minutes, dominated him. And then Jake Shields jumped him. You know what I mean? He just sort of like side controlled him and slapped him and made a sort of fool of him in the PI after Mike Jackson called him out on Twitter. But like, this is different with Masvidal, dude. He has been a grade A clown this year. Everything he said he would never be, and everything he called out Conor McGregor for being, he became in 2022, and 2021 even at moments as well, like it's just, he ain't had a good time, you know what I mean, he had the fight build up with uh, Covington, and uh, then he lost to Covington for 25 minutes, had his one moment, but he lost to Covington very, very convincingly in their fight, and then out of pure, like, soy rage almost he just attacks covington from behind with a sucker punch doesn't even knock him down admits that he did it on social media and now he's surprised that he's in court and covington's trying to get some money out of him like it's just masvidal and then also on top of it uh turning down this fight not fighting this guy not fighting that guy all of a sudden wanting to get a title shot against leon edwards and saying edwards is a pussy for ducking him even though he's number 11 ranked in the welterweight division like it's just gilbert burns he turned him down and called out gilbert burns when burns is the only guy taking people on right now like it's it's just been a mess of a of a year for jorge masvidal and uh he's able to fight colby can't because of the intricacies of his of his uh, court case but masvidal can fight still but he's just, whatever he's doing, he has to deal with the court cases first, so he can have a clear mind going into his next fight camp, but still, Masvidal's been being a bitch this year, and also, Covington never insulted your wife and kids, and that's what you blamed you attacking Covington on, that's not why you attacked Covington, or you would have done it before the fight happened, didn't see you running across the stage trying to attack him at the press conference. No, you wanted your chance in the octagon. It didn't go your way. And because you lost, that's why you attacked him. Because you lost. Okay? Colby Covington said you were a deadbeat dad. And to prove him wrong, you proved you were a deadbeat dad by going out on a school night and attacking someone in the street and risking time in jail whilst you have kids. You man child. Fuck Masvidal this year. Moving on to something else, which is... Hamzat Shemaev, missed weight for UFC 279, been talking a whole bunch of grease about Costa and all these guys at middleweight, but don't want to fight them, 
Um, only fights, only wants to fight Adesanya at middleweight, it seems. All of a sudden, Whitaker's his best friend when it's time to move up and fight a contender at middleweight. So, yeah, I think he's just waffling a bit it's about some of these matchups at middleweight that, that he wants and uh, also missing weight at 170 and acting like it was no big deal was a bit of a bad move as well. I'm not too annoyed by Hamzat Chimeyev, but he has had some stinky moments this year. So I think he deserves to be put at C tier for sure. We move on. Juliana Pena. I'm going to, if you guys don't know about this, not just the way that she fought against Amanda Nunes in their rematch, but I'm going to tell you this. Have you seen her interview on ESPN of why she deserves the trilogy? She deserves B tier. It really annoyed me. She proceeded to name no accomplishments whatsoever. No accomplishments whatsoever that she had for why she deserved the trilogy. But she started spouting off about the fact that she's a, a mother in the UFC and you have no idea how hard it is to be a mother sometimes. And I've overcame that. And I had a child and stuff like this, and I brought life into the world, and, and people don't understand how difficult that is, and that's the reason why she deserves a trilogy against Amanda Nunes, when she didn't even defend a belt once, and arguably shouldn't have got a title shot in the first place, because she keeps losing to people like Jermaine Durand and me, and other people in the fucking bantamweight division of the UFC. Fuck you, Juliana Pena, and you strike like you're blind. We move on to someone else who is. Tony Kelly. People forget about Tony Kelly. Again, I'm not too mad at the xenophobia. I think it's kind of funny. Um, the way he was talking about dirty Brazilians and all this stuff. I'm not I'm not too upset about that. But people were. So I think he deserves to be in this video. And also, he missed weight for the Adrian Yanez fight after talking all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And he was talking shit to Yanez when Yanez had his son with him. You don't do that shit. That's not what you do. He was going after Yanez when Yanez was with his kid backstage. And then he fucking missed weight. That's a scum move. C tier for him. But I don't really care about the whole oh, dinophobia thing. I don't, I don't give a fuck about that. But yeah, fuck him. We move on to something else, which is Darren Till. Disgrace. D tier. But because he lost and it's such a sad reality of his career, I'm not too angry at him. I'm more sad about him. I'm disappointed by Darren Till. But I'm not hating of Darren Till. But here's the thing. Biggest fight of your career we're only starting to notice abs a week away from the fight. What's going on? We're literally checking on Instagram saying, oh, faint outlines of some abs. I think his belly's gone a little bit two weeks away from the fucking biggest fight of your career where you have to save your career. You should have abs starting your training camp. Start acting like a fucking athlete, you mong. And then as soon as he loses, ah, me ACL. It was me fucking ACL again, lad. Like, I just don't have time for it. D tier. We move on. And we're going to get to S tier in a second. Who's this? Oh, uh, Macy Chasson. I, was, I literally thought it was a man. Um, Macy Chasson, uh, liberal bitch. <laughs> we move on. Uh, <laughs> Kamaru Usman. Uh, C tier because he was cheating against Edwards and it really did annoy me. But he got KO'd, so I can't. It's not like he cheated and it worked out for him. You know what I mean? That, that would have been a different story, but. Yeah, Usman's got to be in there. He's being annoying at the start of the year. And uh, he took the loss pretty well to Edwards, though. So I do have to give him that. But, yeah, I've got to put Usman on here because, yeah, he was glove grabbing against Edwards, cage grabbing. And Edwards got called out for it and got, like, penalized for it in the fight by losing the position and stuff like that. Whereas Usman got away with, like, four different fucking fouls in the fight. So I've got to put him at C tier because it was a major fight. We move on to someone else who is at S tier. I'm just going to check around the perimeter just to make sure I'm not missing anyone here. Nope, it's time to declare my most hated fighter of 2022. His name is Marab Devalashvili. Fuck him. That's all I'm going to say. And some of you may be like, huh? Why is he Why is he pulling out Marab? Why is Marab Devalashvili catching shots here? Catching strays? Fuck him, dude. He is so annoying. So annoying, dude. Aldo fight, yeah? You get given Aldo for a title elimination bout, yeah? What do you do at potentially the last fight of Aldo's career? 
you hold him against a fucking cage like a bitch that you are dude you're a fucking bitch listen man uh, people call me out for saying this. I'm not trying to call out that style of fighting. Makashev, he took down Oliveira. Or he didn't take down Oliveira. He knocked down Oliveira, subbed him. I'm not complaining about the style of fighting. Okay? Grapplers can be grapplers and it's fun. And I can accept that. And it can be skillful. Holding someone against a cage because you're a bit stronger than them is fucking pathetic. Fuck you. Especially when it's Aldo, a legend of the sport. And that's the last time we got to see him in the cage. Is you holding him against a fucking cage and we didn't even get to see a good performance from him? Fuck you, Marab. Go fuck yourself. And second of all, you were on the ground with Aldo and Aldo wasn't even going to retire yet. He wasn't even going to retire. He wasn't going to make the announcement. We might have been able to see him fight again in January. And he told you in confidence on the ground... Uh, by the way, that might be my last one, so just want to let you know, uh, respect for being in the cage with me and all that, because he's a gentleman. And then what does Marab do? Aldo don't announce retirement plans. No one thinks Aldo's going to retire. And then Marab comes out and says, oh yeah, by the way, guys, he told me in confidence, um, in private, whispered it in my ear. Uh, he's done, by the way, guys. He's, he's retiring. And ruins the fucking retirement plan of Jose Aldo. Ruins the announcement that he possibly could have made. A whole career of Aldo. Surely there would have been some kind of unique announcement to announce his retirement. Or he would have been in the crowd at UFC Brazil and the camera would have panned to him. And he would have retired there in his retirement. And he would have had a great moment. Marab fucking ruined it by blabbing about it and telling everyone about the fucking retirement. That Aldo weren't even sure about yet. Forcing him into making his decision, and he announced it the fucking next day after Marab leaked that shit. Fuck you, Marab. And second of all, third of all, this fucking guy here yeah, is a title. He's a title guy. My, why is my alarm going off at fucking eleven? Either way, this guy's a fucking title cuck. He's a cuck for the title. Oh, Aldo. Oh, God, you're such a good champion, Aldo. How does it feel to be a champion? Oh, I'll never touch the belt while you're there, Aldo. Just fucking fight for a belt. I don't care if you're friends. This dude's literally sitting out, watching Aldo be the champion, fucking jerking his little midget fucking Georgian dick off. Fuck Marab, dude. Fuck this guy. Fighting all these other contenders for Aldo. Hello? I'll fight that guy for you, Aljo. Oh, don't worry, Aljo. You just you just keep being champion. I'll, I'll be a contender forever. You fucking little fucking cuck bitch. Fuck Marab this year, dude. He's royally pissed me off. But he seems like a cool guy, actually, personality-wise. And um, I just hope that his fucking actions can start adding up. Because it don't add up. But his personality seems like a cool guy. He does. He seems like a fun guy. Pretty chill. Pretty funny. But, um, fuck him this year. He's pissed me off beyond belief. Like and subscribe. See you later, Toodle Pip. Goodbye. Yeah.